Supra-segmental features. So supra-segmental features are, in a sense, tacked onto the segments. So when we talk about segments of words, we're talking about phones, individual sounds. But supra-segmental features sort of float above those phones. They're not part of the description of the phones themselves. They're, or another way of saying it is that they're added to or across certain phones. So one such example would be length. So in certain languages, the length of a vowel or a consonant can be used to differentiate words. So we have the triplet in Finnish, the first one meaning mud, the second one meaning some other, and the third one meaning but. So very different meanings that are differentiated purely by the length of the segments within it. So the first one with no long segments would be muta, mud. The second one would be muta. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's a longer u sound, muta. And then there's muta, muta. When it's a long consonant, generally what happens is that the same consonant is the end of one syllable and the beginning of the next. So you get muta. Whereas in the others, that T sound is going to be the beginning of the final syllable only. It won't be part of the first syllable. All right, another um, pair that we get in Finnish is I kill versus I meet. Fairly, <laughs> clearly a, an important distinction. And the only difference in pronunciation between the two is that the second syllable is pronounced long, the vowel of the second syllable. So you get tapan versus tapan. Then the third one that we've got is a triplet again of come, comes, and is windy. So we've got tule versus tule versus tule. And then the other language that we'll look at, actually a related language to Finnish, is Hungarian, which also has a length difference. So we've got the, the difference between my song and melody, dolom versus Dolom, dolom. So that L is pronounced long in the second one. And then there's one that, that I always find kind of funny is that when somebody sneezes or when you're giving a toast to somebody, you will say, and that has two long A sounds in it. The third, or sorry, second and third A's are pronounced long. But sometimes when foreigners are learning Hungarian and getting used to those um, long versus short vowels, they will mess it up and they'll make the second vowel long. But instead of making the third vowel long, they'll actually make the consonant long. So it'll come out. And if you say that, it means something very different. So instead of to your health, it means to your whole ass. All right, an intonation is another supersegmental feature. This is something that um, we find quite a bit in English, uh, where the import of a sentence can be determined purely by the melody of how we say it. So for example, if you take the same string of words and you say it with a rising um, intonation at the end, then you're gonna get a question. You ace the exam? versus a statement, you ace the exam, and there you're going to get that falling intonation. Um, another one that, that I'd like to demonstrate this with, is you take the word well, which can, you know, by itself, it's really not a terribly meaningful word. It doesn't have a lot of content, but it does have a lot of um, import in terms of what you're about to say. Uh, so, for example, and I think you'll sense this with each uh, part of it, that you'll get a sense of what the person would be saying right after that. So, when you say it with a rising intonation, well, that's usually a prompt for somebody to say something. Whereas if you say it with a falling intonation, well, that's more like, okay, let's move on. A flat intonation, 
Well, that usually means that you're about to say something that uh, disagrees with the person you just talked to. Uh, rising, falling. Uh, let me see if I can do this right. Well, or a falling, rising. Well, those I think as well, you can kind of intuit that there's a difference in what pers the person is trying to get across in how you say well. It doesn't change the word, it changes how the word is interpreted um, socially in, this, in these situations. Sort of what seems to be similar, but it has a very different purpose in language would be tone. Tone is where, likewise, we've got different pitch on a syllable, but in this case, it differentiates words. So notice when we were looking at well, it didn't change the word. Whereas in this case, depending on how we pronounce this sequence of sounds, uh, ma, if we say it with a high level tone, ma, versus a high rising tone, ma, versus a low falling rising, ma, versus a high falling, ma. Now, I don't speak Mandarin. I, <laughs> I'm not good at this. Uh, I usually, when I'm teaching this in a class, I will have somebody who's a, a speaker of the language give these examples. So if you can find such a speaker, you'll hear better examples of these. That, that's the best I could do. But the point is that each of those pronunciations of that string of sounds leads to a different meaning. Mother, hemp, horse, and scold. Now, I also want you to note, it's not that you have to hit a particular pitch. It's not like you have to have perfect pitch when you're speaking a tone language. It's relative pitch. So my high level is relative to my normal tone, my normal fundamental frequency, my normal pitch. So it's higher for me. It's not that I'm aiming for, say, a high C or something like that. All right, another sort of sur sur uh, super segmental that we ha do find in English is stress. And what we mean when we say stress is which syllable in a word is stressed. So um, this little accent here indicates which vowel or the, the nucleus of the syllable is being stressed. So for example, if we say record versus record, you can tell there's a difference in meaning there. And it's primarily based on whether the second syllable is stressed or the first syllable is stressed. And we have a number of those pairs um, that differentiate between the verb which generally has the second syllable stressed and the noun, which generally has the first syllable stressed. So we've got record versus record. And then likewise, you can see a difference between insight, which is a noun versus insight, which is a verb. In that case, they're not actually related in any way. And that's reflected in the spelling. But as I always say, spelling is irrelevant for the study of language. What we're interested in is purely the pronunciation. So here, the difference between insight versus insight is purely which of these syllables is being stressed.